you guys think? Amen. Amen. So you see there's a need out there. At the beginning part, we asked some Christians and non-Christians, what do you know about Jehovah's Witnesses? And more than uh, more often than not, we have the answer is, well, I don't really don't know much. I know they knock on doors, they go in twos, they don't celebrate holidays, but I didn't know they were much different from Catholics or Protestants or, or any of those things. And so there's, there's a real um, gap in knowledge in the Christian church regarding who are Jehovah's Witnesses. And so it's a gap that we have a responsibility of helping um, that they understand who Jehovah's Witnesses are because it's really important. There are 7 million Jehovah's Witnesses over preaching 1.4 billion hours. There is no other Christian organization in the world that comes close to preaching that much uh, in the door-to-door ministry. Not even the Mormons come close. The Mormons have over 50,000 missionaries full-time that they serve two years, uh, yet the, the, the Mormon church is eclipsed by the efforts of the Watchstar Society, and we are all witnesses of that fact because we all probably collectively knocked on probably millions of doors throughout our lifetime and 10 years of witnesses. Um, and so the book, we, we have the book, though, Can I Get a Witness? And the book really helps with understanding who Jehovah's Witnesses are from the perspective of someone who defended it, loved it, and cherished their religion, and someone who still has a great deal of respect for those who are in the Jehovah's Witness religion. Uh, my mom, my brother, my father, my sisters, my nephew, my nieces, uh, my uncles, my aunts, my cousins, they're all Jehovah's Witnesses. And the book that I wrote was in, in hopes that maybe if they just read it, because they won't talk to me about the gospel, but if they maybe just read this book secretly, if, if they just downloaded it on their Kindle or, or purchased it or something, and if they read it, I wrote it so that if when if they did read it, that they would know at least why I did what I did. And they would at least understand my perspective of coming out of the Watchtower and my reasons as to why I believe in the Jesus of the Bible. Uh, so I have a funny story I really want to share with you guys. Uh, it's short. I work in, uh, at work I started uh, uh, telling some friends that I had a book coming out and uh, a few weeks ago we had a young lady who started working where I work and I guess one of my my co-workers mentioned to the, to the new young lady that was working there uh, that I was an aspiring author and, uh, and so she asked me, so what are you writing about? And I said, are, do you, are you sure you want to know? And she, and she said, yeah, of course, absolutely. And I, and I showed her a picture of the book. I gave her my card. And she says, can I get a witness? How to understand and set free Jehovah's Witnesses. And she looked at me. She said, why would you want to set free Jehovah's Witnesses? At that moment, I looked at her. And I said, are you a Jehovah's Witness? And she said, yes, I am. And I was like, oh, God. <laughs> what are the odds? <laughs> but in that, I was, I just said to her, listen, you know what? I, I, my card says, it says a, a former Jehovah's Witness. And so she, so I, I mean, there's no hiding it. But I said, listen, you know, I grew up as a Jehovah's Witness. My mother, my father, my family are still in the Jehovah's Witness religion. This book is to help Christians understand Jehovah's Witnesses. I'm sure that's something that you would appreciate because you feel, I know that Jehovah's Witnesses feel very misunderstood. So this is a book to help Christians understand Jehovah's Witnesses and also just to talk to them about the Bible. She says, you know what, that sounds interesting. Maybe I'll buy one. But there's a huge need. And before I go any further, I also just want to acknowledge uh, that the, the documentary you saw was uh, was directed and produced by a good friend, Manuel Sabdania, who is also an aspiring uh, film director. Uh, and let's just give him a round of applause for the efforts that he did. <laughs> and right back there, actually. <laughs> and so we appreciate uh, what, what he did and uh, the, the time that went into producing it. And uh, we have an awesome... You know, short documentary. We actually have a full length one uh, still in the works that we want to release alongside the paperback version of my book, which comes out in November. But enough of that. Let's let's get to the Word of God. If you have your Bibles, let's please go to Second Corinthians chapter five. And if you actually remember last year, I I preached on a verse of scriptures in Second Corin in Second Corinthians chapter four, and I was talking about the supremacy of Christ as Lord. And so this year, I thought it'd be if we just pick it up where we were and talk about the fact that we are to be witnesses of our blessed Lord Jesus Christ. So 2 Corinthians chapter 5, you can go to it in your Bibles, your Kindles, or your iPads, or whatever else technology we have out there. Starting in verse 11. 
Why are we to witness to Jehovah's Witnesses? Why is it essential that Christians witness to Jehovah's Witnesses? The scripture says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11, Therefore, because we know the fear of the Lord, we seek to persuade people. We are completely open before God, and I hope we are completely open to your consciences as well. What motivates us as Christians to share the gospel with anyone? It is the fear and the love of the Lord. If we fear God, it says, if you fear God, you shall keep his commandments. If you love God, you will obey him. Jesus says that if you love me, you will what? You will follow my commandments. You will obey me. And so as followers of the king, the master, Jesus Christ, we want to be obedient to that. And therefore, because we know the fear of the Lord, we seek to persuade people. We want to persuade the Jehovah's Witnesses to know Jesus, to love Jesus, to worship Jesus, to have the same fear, admiration, and love for the Lord as we share. The verse tells us, says, we are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to be proud of us so that you may have a reply for those who take pride in the outward appearance rather than the heart. So the Jehovah Witnesses very often, they, they have a lot of pride when it comes to the outward appearance. We don't celebrate birthdays. We don't go to war. We don't do pagan uh, rituals or, or holidays. If the whole world were Jehovah's Witnesses, it would be a peaceful place. Only we take seriously the command of Jesus to go door to door. It's not really a command of Jesus to go door to door, but they say there is. They take pride in the outward appearance. Look how righteous I am. Look how holy I am. Look at the things that I do. How many hands I have up at the kingdom hall raising them up and, and answering questions because they don't raise their hands for worship. They raise their hands to, uh, to, to show how smart they are, how much knowledge they have, have acquired. And so not in, there, there's no humble adoration. There's no humble hands in worship, but there's, there is proud outward appearance of knowledge when they raise those hands. It says that we, we should, we should have pride and we shouldn't have take, take pride in those who, who have outward appearance of righteousness, but that we should commend ourselves to them. We should persuade them. It says in verse 13, I love this verse, for if we are out of our mind, it is for God. When I left the Jehovah's Witnesses, my family thought I was crazy. I was a fool. I was out of my mind. What they were right. I am out of my mind for God, for Jesus Christ. Aren't we all? Amen. Amen. But if we are minded, it is for you. Be crazy for God. Be all out for Jesus Christ. Don't be ashamed to be his witness. Don't let the Jehovah Witness steal the joy. They think that only they can be called witnesses of Jehovah. I, I tell you this, that we are the true witnesses of Jehovah God, the true witnesses of Yahweh, the Creator. We are the true witnesses of Jesus. And they cannot steal that from us. Verse 14, for if Christ love compels us, since we have reached this conclusion, if one died for all, then all isn't that incredible? Incredible reality. Incredible reality that we have the privilege of knowing and sharing. Why hide it? We should not hide this at all because it is the joy that we have that we know that if Christ died for us, that his love compels us. And if he died, then all died because in him all are made alive. The ministry that comes to our door is often ignored. The Jehovah Witnesses and the Mormons come knocking and too often Christians just slam the door. As you heard in the documentary, I had knocked on thousands of doors for the majority of my life uh, from Hartford, Connecticut all the way down to New Haven. So that's, that's, that's a lot of territory that I covered in my life. Not once did I ever have a Christian open the door, invite me in, and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not once did a Christian open the door to my mother or my father and share the gospel of Jesus. Not once did, did the Christians open the door to the Jehovah Witnesses and to, the, to my brother and my sister invite them in 
for coffee and, 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 and share the gospel with them. There is something incredibly wrong with that, and it needs to change. And we are the agents of change that will bring that to our churches, bring it to our ministers, make ministries that change. Christ's love compels us. Brothers, this isn't, it's not, it's not just a, uh, this, this isn't a game. This isn't just a, a fun ministry to do. It's not just an apologetics. It's not something we just uh, want to play with. This is people's lives. Seven million Jehovah's Witnesses. Thirteen million Mormons. Over a billion Muslims. The church of Jesus Christ needs to rise up and stand and be the bride, be the warrior of Christ. Verse 15 says, and, and he died for all those who live, should no, uh, that those who should live no longer live for themselves, but for the one who died for them and was raised. We see the supremacy of Jesus Christ here and that he is the one who was killed and was raised to life and that he is the one whom every knee shall bow and he's the one whom we are to give an account to and the Jehovah Witness needs to know that to Jesus every knee will bow and their knees will bow to Jesus and they will give an account to him for all the things they've done, both good and bad. We live not for ourselves anymore. We have been made new. We don't live for ourselves anymore. Once we did, as Jehovah's Witnesses, we were constantly living for ourselves. What was our greatest hope and joy except for Rick Farron? Rick Farron wanted to, was going to go to heaven as a witness. Well, all, most of us wanted to be in paradise earth. We all wanted to be in paradise because we wanted to be with the lion, with the handle the snakes, handle the the, the the tigers, and just be with them and, and build our own house and and just and be independent from God. Because in the Jehovah Witness religion, paradise is a paradise without God, which is really no paradise at all. It's it's really hell. Because in the Jehovah Witness uh, teaching is that Jehovah and Jesus will forever be separated from from humanity. You'll never see Jesus. You'll never see God. You'll always be on the earth. The 144,000 will be reigning over you. And there's no God. That beautiful verse that we used to preach door to door, we used to read to the neighbors, and we used to say, God will wipe out every tear from their eyes, and death will be no more. But before it says that, it says, God will make his dwelling with man, and he will pitch his tent amongst us, and he will be our God, and we will be his people. We look forward to a true paradise. A true theocratic kingdom in which we will live under God's rule and hand. And we will not just live under the rule, we will be ruling with him. What a blessed opportunity. But brothers and sisters, we have a, a ministry. We have an important ministry, and the important ministry that comes to the door is not to be overlooked. Because the Jehovah Witnesses need salvation just as much as anyone else we come into contact with. They need to know Jesus. I once had a Christian missionary tell me a story that shocked me. It bothered me. Christian missionary uh, was has gone over all over the world, to China, India. He's prayed for the sick and the lame, and he's and, and by God's power has healed them. He has uh, seen dead people raised from the dead, and he's seen all these incredible acts of God. He's traveled the whole world telling people about Jesus Christ. I told him I was the next Jehovah's Witness. And he told me that some of his encounters with the witnesses, and, this, and then he told me this, I got so sick of the witnesses, I prayed that they would never touch or knock on my door. A Christian missionary who's been all over the world to share the gospel for Jesus. And yet, the very person who comes knocking on his door, he prays them away. There's something very wrong about that. And I took that very seriously and personally. You are praying away my mother, my brother, my father, my sister, my cousins, my aunts, my uncles. You're praying them away. Shame on you. Shame on any Christian who believes that. We have a ministry. And although in the church we, we use the, the lingo, we say, oh, well, this is my ministry over here, or that's my ministry, or my ministry is this, this thing over here, and, and we all claim these different types of ministries. And all that's true, there's various types of ministries according to the Holy Spirit. There is in reality just one ministry, and that is the ministry of reconciliation. 
That is the only ministry that God sees, whether it's in uh, child care, whether it's in door-to-door evangelism, whether it's in preaching from a pulpit. There is only one type of ministry, and the ultimate goal of ministry is to see people reconciled to God. Let's continue in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and verse 16 says, For now on, then, we do not know anyone in the purely human way, even if we have known Christ in a purely human way or in the flesh, yet we know him no longer in this way. Because therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is what? He is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and look and behold, new things have come. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This ministry that we receive from God is first ushered in by new birth. We have an incredible opportunity to experience Jesus, to experience new birth, regeneration by the Holy Spirit, and be made new. We're no longer the old Jehovah's Witness. We're no longer the old Mormon, the old Wiccan, the old person. We're not just putting on new personality. We've taken on upon a new heart. The new creation through Christ, uh, the new birth ushers us, ushers us into the ministry of reconciliation. All Christians have but one ministry. We are commanded to be vessels of reconciliation and to love all people, including Jehovah's Witnesses. For the love and the fear of Christ tells us. That love, that fear, that holy admiration to the Lord is what compels us to love, to minister, and to reach out to Jehovah's Witnesses. But it's not just, we're not just new creations. We're something much more than just new creations. It says in verse 18, Everything is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. So right there, We are all ministers of the gospel of reconciliation. The Jehovah Witnesses have that little aspect, right? They have that little nugget of truth. They say that all witnesses are are ministers, ordained ministers. And you, if you are in Christ, if you are a new creation, the Holy Spirit is your degree. You are a minister of the gospel of Jesus. It is your responsibility to share the gospel with everyone and anyone who has ears to listen. Verse 19, this, that is in Christ. So this is referring to the ministry of reconciliation. This is the ministry of reconciliation that in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against him. He has committed the message of reconciliation to us. We are entrusted of that message to see the world reconciled for Christ. But not only that, we're not just uh, ministers either. We are not just new creations. We are something even more. It's as we are ambassadors for Christ, certain that God is appealing through us. We plead on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Brothers and sisters, we are missionaries. We are ministers. We are ambassadors of Jesus Christ. Being an ambassador of Jesus Christ is more important than being a, a, an ambassador to the UN or the United States or of any nation and country. Imagine the pride of those people who are elected to be ambassadors to the United Nations or to the United States or to any form of government. The pride that they had that they can go before world leaders and proclaim the message of their country, proclaim the message of their king, the message of their president. How incredible that we are entrusted with being ambassadors of the King Jesus Christ, with his message and with his salvation. God clothes us in salvation. God clothes us in the gospel. And with that message, we go out there for it. We make disciples as ambassadors. Usually ambassadors for nations, they try and, and spread goodwill. They try to uh, convince people not to go to war or to give over nuclear weapons. Or they try to use a diplomatic process and, and try to resolve world issues. Brothers and sisters, we have the only solution to world issues. We have the only solution to the world's problems. And we are ambassadors of that solution. His name is Jesus Christ. Be reconciled to God. How many of us want to see 
our friends and family in the Watchtower to be reconciled to God. Some of us have spent hundreds of hours studying, researching, talking to our Jehovah Witness friends and family. The work is not in vain. I would be stubborn Jehovah's Witness in that I used to make videos on YouTube defending the Watchtower, and a lot of you guys know me from, from YouTube, and uh, some of you are probably watching right now online and, and thinking, you know, wow, you know, I saw this guy on YouTube. He's made a, you know, an incredible turnaround. And it's true. Our testimonies are incredible. From light to darkness, blind but now with sight, deaf but now we hear. My, my testimony is awesome. And so are yours. Every single person. You might not have even been raised a Jehovah's Witness. You might have never even been a Jehovah's Witness, but your testimony, it's awesome. Your testimony is beautiful. Jesus saved a wretch like me and you. And to that we are all witnesses and ambassadors. That even the most wicked man on this earth can receive salvation from Jesus Christ. In Acts 1.8, Jesus said to his disciples before the ascension that you will receive power from the Holy Spirit and you will be my what? I can't hear you. You will be his what? Hallelujah. You will be his witnesses to the ends of the earth. Witnesses of Jesus. Jesus' witnesses. Whatever you were, JWs. We're JWs. <laughs> We're Jesus' witnesses. We are to be witnesses of Jesus. But that, it's, not, it's not just being witnesses of Jesus because we were JWs before. We were a different type of JW. What were we lacking? What Jesus said. Exactly. We were not only lacking Jesus, but Jesus says that you'll be clothed with power from on high when the Holy Spirit arrives. We were lacking the ministry and the power and the glory and the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. We weren't clothed with power. There was no power in the message. What kind of a message is that? Maybe you might be able to go to paradise. If you work hard enough, knock on more doors than, 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 than the pioneers or, or whatever. There's no power in that. That's weakness. Because that is the flesh. They were trying to uh, please the flesh. You're trying to uh, work and and impress man and impress the organization, impress the circuit here who would come and and people would all of a sudden become pioneers when the circuit overseer was in town. Why is that? Because it's an outward appearance of holiness and of righteousness. And Jesus said of the Pharisees who were outwardly righteous, but inside they were uh, white tombs, white dead man's tombs, and and they were whitewashed towers and walls and that they were not truly following the God that they claim to serve. We don't want our families, members, and our friends to be Pharisees or lost. In John chapter 3, we see that Nicodemus was a Pharisee. And when Nicodemus came in, in kind of in the in private and secretly uh, to Jesus. And you know, there's a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses that, that do that. They go on the internet and they secretly type in Jehovah's Witnesses on Google. Because they're looking for something. They're looking for something. I tell you what, when they search something on the internet on Jehovah's Witnesses, make sure they find your page. Make sure they find something that is uplifting and that it brings them to Christ. Because you can debunk Jehovah's Witnesses all day long. But what compels us? The love of Christ. The fear of the Lord compels us. And to persuade all men and all Jehovah's Witnesses to come to Christ and be reconciled to God. We have this incredible ministry. It's not to be overlooked. God doesn't want Christians who merely go to church, who merely do ministry, God is looking for Christians who will stand up and be the church. Not just go to church, but be the church. Vessels of holiness, ambassadors of Christ, witnesses of Jesus. Stand up. Can I get a witness? 
Will you be a witness? Will you be a witness to the young person who grew up a Jehovah's Witness and is feeling pressure to be baptized as a JW, but inside he's afraid? Can I get a witness? To the young couples who come knocking on your door and are having their marriages destroyed by an organization, can I get a witness? To the man who comes knocking on your door who seems to have all the answers yet inside is empty and alone. Can I get a witness? To the young woman who was molested by an elder or a member of her kingdom hall who feels like dying inside just to hide her shame. Can I get a witness? To the person who's been a witness all their life and are tired of not measuring up or doing enough good works, or impressing the right people. Can I get a witness? All JWs everywhere who think they have the truth but have not come to know the way, the truth, and the life. Can I get a witness? Will the true witnesses of Jesus please stand up? In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. There are too many people out there hurting. Too many people who need the, the gospel of, our, of, of salvation. Too many witnesses who need Jesus and who want Jesus, but there's nowhere there to give a witness. That will change, and, and it will change because God has foreordained that the church will give a witness until the ends of the earth. And we are the vessels of that message. And we will give a, we will give a witness. Jesus says in the good news of the kingdom, the gospel will be preached into all the inhabited earth then the end will come. You can be seen. Hallelujah. Amen. Be proud witnesses of Jesus. We can change the world. We can change the world more by being obedient to the call of the master than we can by ever going to a voting booth and, and picking a, a, a human being to represent us. We can do more to change the world by being the church instead of building churches. We can do more to change the world than Jehovah's Witnesses can, the Mormons can, the Muslims can, any other religious group out there can. Because we are ambassadors of the message of reconciliation. Reconciliation brings peace with God. It says in, in Romans 5, well, now that we have been justified by faith, we enjoy peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, and we have now received reconciliation. What a beautiful thing that we have. What a treasure. Last year we talked about in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, which is we're, we're likened to earthen vessels. This vessel is, is meant to let light shine out of it, just as God said in the beginning, let light shine out of darkness. And it says, and God has shown in our hearts a light of the gospel, the glory of of God in the face of Christ Jesus our Lord. Let your light shine before man. Let your light shine before your unbelieving family member and friends. Let your light shine before your JW relatives. Let Jesus be glorified in your shining your light. This is my final appeal. To those here who need Jesus Christ who are searching for Jesus Christ, who are in need of the love of Jesus Christ, we're here to give a witness today. We're here to give a witness. Let's uh, go one more time back to 2 Corinthians chapter 6 now. We're going to learn that there is no better time for salvation we're going to find out when is the day of salvation. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1 and 2, it says, working together with him. That's awesome. We're working together with him. With God. We're working together with God. Working together with him, we also appeal to you, don't receive God's grace in vain. For he says, Yahweh says, I heard you in an acceptable time. I helped you in the day of salvation. Brothers and sisters, look, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. 
we, right now, in this room, have the opportunity to extend salvation to those who don't have it. And that's my plea. That's my prayer. For those of you who are here, who may not know if Jesus is the right way, who may not know if, if you're still confused as the teachings and the doctrines of the watchtower or if you just feel you might not have enough knowledge or you feel like you may not stand up or or be able to live the Christian life, I tell you this, now is the day. Now is the time. It is the acceptable time. It is the acceptable season. You're here today for purpose, with purpose. God has extended his arm of salvation to you. But that doesn't mean that it'll be easy. We know that. Many of us carry the scars of the cross that we carry. Many of us are still carrying the cross and we will continue to carry it until the day that we're crucified on it and to the day that we're raised back with Jesus. I want to keep reading from 2 Corinthians. It says in verse 3, We give no opportunity for stumbling to anyone, for this ministry will not be blamed. The ministry is blameless. We might be imperfect agents of that ministry, and the Jehovah's Witnesses might try to defame us. They might try to uh, spread lies about us, make us feel ashamed, make us feel hurt inside. Yet the ministry would not be blamed because it's God's ministry. But as God's ministers, we commend ourselves in everything. Listen to the hardships. Listen to the walk. Christian walk that Paul engaged in. This is Paul's life, not only his life, but your life, my life, and everyone else who desires to follow Christ. This is what your life will sound like, because by great endurance, by afflictions, by hardships, by difficulties, by beatings, by imprisonments, by riots, by labors, by sleepless nights, by times of hunger, by purity, but by knowledge, by patience, by kindness, by the Holy Spirit, by sincere love, by the message of truth, by the power of God, through weapons of righteousness on the right hand and the left, through glory and dishonor, through slander and good report, as deceivers, the Jehovah's Witness says we're deceivers, yet being true. Through glory and dishonor. As unknown, as unknown yet recognized. As dying and look we live. As being disciplined yet not killed. As grieving yet always rejoicing. As poor yet enriching many. As having nothing yet possessing everything. We possess everything through Jesus Christ. Can I get a witness? Will you be a witness? Don't wait for tomorrow. If you hear his voice today, do not harden your hearts. Because today is the day of salvation. To follow Christ is to pick up your cross, being a witness and ambassador of his gospel, and being a co heir of his glory. The ministry of reconciliation, being a witness of Jesus, is a road marked with hardships and suffering. But you will reap the blessing. And you reap, and you will reap the rewards. In the end, and even now, following Christ will always be worth it. For I decided to know nothing among you but Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Jesus crucified. We raise Him up, we lift Him up in glory and honor. As Christ is King and Lord and God and Redeemer. And the only question which remains is can I get a witness? Thank you. Thank all of you. Blessing on you all. So I just want to encourage everyone to share this incredible message of the gospel with Jehovah's Witnesses. All right, now I'm engaged in this ministry. You know, I've been trying to shake the JW ministry off for a long time, and God keeps putting me back in it. So, you know, because I, we've, I've been out for five years now, and uh, 
after a certain amount of time, you almost, you, you, you get over it. Uh, the, the scars heal, the wounds heal, and you just want to move on with life. And uh, so I, I've been trying to just move on and, and leave the Jehovah Witnesses behind me, and yet something always happens. Either I get invited to do something for Jehovah's Witnesses, or I get a knock on my door, or, or Jehovah's Witnesses at work. Something happens where God just keeps back to these people. <laughs> Amen. See, the ministry pursues us. Even when we don't pursue it, the ministry will pursue us. And so I decided to write this book, Can I Get a Witness? And uh, I, I'm really sincere in, in trying to help people understand Jehovah's Witnesses and set them free. Because Jehovah's Witnesses are in need of being set free. And so this is just the title, uh, the cover of the book. It's available right now on ebook. Um, on Amazon.com, it'll be a paperback version available uh, November, sometime in November. We haven't figured out quite the date yet. We will be updated. There's cards. I'm gonna set. I'm gonna leave my table there for a little bit longer. We have some cards up there and some information regarding the ministry that we're involved in, uh, Real Truth Ministries, and that we're trying to bring truth not only to Jehovah's Witnesses but to everyone out there who's in bondage to false religion. And uh, so we really want to help people come to know come to know Jesus Christ. That's our ministry. It's a ministry of reconciliation. And so I invite you, and I, and I, and I invite you to tell your, your pastors, your, your ministers, your, your churches, your friends about what we are doing at Real Truth Ministries. Share the book with them. Share the ministry. And uh, let's set the world on fire for Jesus Christ. Thank you all.